Today's gubernatorial inauguration kicked off this morning with a prayer service at the same church where Governor McMaster and his family attend regular worship services. News 19's Brandon Taylor was outside before the service started. Brandon. Yeah, inaugural events began this morning around 9 o'clock this morning here at First Presbyterian Church on Marion Street in downtown Columbia as the governor, the First Lady Peg McMaster and the First Family, they gathered with hundreds of worshipers as they got ready to, to kick off the day and to kick off the festivities for the events. Now, this church was organized in June of 1795 and First Presbyterian Church is the oldest, one of the oldest congregations here in Columbia. Their membership role sits at about 2,500 people and that includes the McMasters. This is is where the first family attends worship. Now, this service was attended by several notable dignitaries here. We saw uh, the Attorney General, Alan Wilson. We also saw the new Secretary, Superintendent of Education, that is, uh, Ellen Weaver. She was also present. But we also caught up with a former governor, Mark Sanford, who gave us a little insight on what he was thinking on this day several years ago as he was getting ready to be sworn in as governor of this great state. Uh, so what I remember is the significance of the church service in kicking off the inaugural activities and the day's activities. It's a neat chance to pause, be still, and think about how do you make the most of these next four years. And as I mentioned, this church service here at First Presbyterian Church really was the beginning of what was an eventful day here in the capital city for the McMaster family. Reporting in front of First Presbyterian Church in downtown Columbia, Brandon Taylor, News 19, WLTX. The inauguration brought hundreds of people to the streets of downtown Columbia from lawmakers, state leaders, law enforcement, judges, and those who just wanted to attend. And that brought business to the capital city, but some added that they were surprised by what they found. Take a listen to what one person had to say. A lot of places were not open on, on Main Street. And uh, in fact, we, we walked around a, a, a bit trying to find a place and uh, we ended up here. Several of the businesses we spoke to say that they were an increase in foot traffic, but the ones close to the state house said that they were very busy. Ones farther away saying not so much. So a beautiful day, the perfect day really. It was about 50 degrees outside um, to have all these people, hundreds of people come together. It was a family affair, Darcy. We got to see both Governor McMaster and Peggy McMaster's children, as well as the first time in a rare appearance that we've seen the Lieutenant Governor's children with her on stage. So that is true. All of the constitutional officers sworn in today. Uh, a lot of people might not know this. We talked about this during our coverage. Uh, the South Carolina Con Constitution says that the governor has to be sworn in by noon on the first Wednesday uh, of the of the second Wednesday of January of January. Yes. Uh, and so that happened had to happen today right at 12 o'clock straight up. Looks like they were off probably about 10 to 15 minutes. I don't know if that means the governor Technically, has to. Technically, we didn't have a governor for 15 <laughs> minutes or something, but there was a small problem. If you were watching, there were some very beautiful, beautiful um, musical performances. We heard from Irmo High School, Hammond High School, and then the governor's school for fine arts from Greenville. There was a music delay in the piano playing that then delayed things a little bit, so the governor didn't exactly get sworn in before noon. Live TV, it's always something interesting to happen. Still ahead uh, later tonight is the inaugural ball. That starts at 7.30 at the Columbia Convention Center. We continue our team coverage there tonight. We'll have more on that event when you join us tonight for News 19 at 6, 7, and 11. If you're thinking, wait, I'll just jump in my ball gown and head that direction. It is a ticketed event. Uh, you have to have been invited to the governor's inaugural ball. Uh, and so that is going to start again tonight at 7.30. But you can follow along with all of the stories we've already covered from the open house at the governor's mansion to the prayer service to the actual inauguration on our website at WLTX.com. You can also find all of that information on the News 19 mobile app.